I'm going to talk to you this morning about something I think is very, very, very important. What does God do, or what will He do, when His children sin? If you have your Bibles, I'm going to read two verses of Scripture found in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasten his son, as the Lord thy God chasteth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Father, <clears throat> we thank you and we praise you for this day in which you've given to us. You have been so wonderful and so good to us. And so we want to give you all the honor and the glory that is due your name. Father, I pray this morning that if there's one here who has never truly accepted you as their personal Savior, that today they would open up their hearts and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. And I pray this morning that all of us who know you, who have committed our hearts and our lives unto you, that we'll take some serious, serious time this morning and look within our own hearts and lives and determine if everything is all right between you and us. Father, forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I've had people come to me and say, well, I, I've told a lie. I know I shouldn't have done that, but uh, I did. Well, God forgive me of that. Or someone else will say, well, I got so angry last week that I could have shot so-and-so. <laughs> what will God do to me about that? You know what? Some people think God just simply ignores sin. They feel just like some mothers do who can't see any faults whatsoever in their children. Mm -hmm. What makes no difference what they do, they think it's all right. Sweethearts, by the way, sweethearts, you know, they can't see any faults in the individual that they're smitten with. But, you know, after they've been married a little while, they... <laughs> <laughs> He said, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you had all those faults. <laughs> uh, well, yes, li listen, God truly loves you. And he wants the very best for you. If you're saved and commit if you committed some sin, God's not going to disown you. You will not lose your salvation. <clears throat> uh, John 10, uh, 27 says, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. By the way, in Ephesians chapter 4, we have a sevenfold guarantee that this God will never cast you out. If you're one of his children, he loves you. You'll always be his children, and he will truly uphold you by his hand. He won't forsake you. We're preserved forever. We have everlasting life, never perished, never plucked out of the Father's hand, sealed under the day of redemption, and we're never, never forsaken. God, listen, does not turn against you or cast you out when you sin. Amen. Now, what does He do? Now, this may sound strange, but according to the Word of God, He'll do the same thing that any good father would do. He will chasten you, chastise you, of course. A good parent, listen, a good parent will provide for his child. He'll provide food and clothing and shelter. But the one thing that a loving father will do, he will correct and discipline his children. Amen. One of the reasons, one of the reasons that many children and families are in trouble today is there is no discipline in the home. None whatsoever. 
God will chastise and correct his children. Why does he do that? He does that so you become a better Christian, so that you'll become a better servant of his, so that you'll better become a better, better individual. So the next question then is what? For what does God punish? Well, like children, many want to know, you know, they want to know just what will God punish me for? <laughs> what can I, in other words, what can I do to get away with it? <laughs> That's what they want to know. God, does God punish you? Something every time I do something wrong? Well, no, I don't think so. I think God wants us to judge ourselves. When you do something wrong, the Holy Spirit that indwells you, you will realize immediately that you've done something wrong, and then you will very quickly cry out to God and confess your sins. And when you do that, God is faithful and just to forgive us of whatever we've done. You know, that, that's the reason that God wants us to confess our sins, cry out to Him for forgiveness, and He will forgive. He wants to do that. It, it, just like a father, an earthly father, you want your children to come, you want them to confess to you that they've done something wrong, you want them to come and say, listen, Dad or Mom, I'm sorry for what I've done. Ah, but, you know, children many times refuse to admit that they've done anything wrong. And they know that if they do admit it, they're going to receive some kind of discipline, whatever it might be. Now, that's what God wants. That's what God does. If we don't confess... We don't confess the sins that we do. He'll punish us. Oh, I know you don't want to hear that. Some say, well, I know I'll be punished if I don't keep the commandments. But that's not it at all. I doubt very seriously if there's anyone in here that keeps all the commandments. You know what bothers us most of all, though? is failing to be what Christ really wants you and me to be. You know, I, by the way, I don't know where you know this, but some people born mad. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> uh, that's absolutely true. Their foot itches, they scratch their head. They, they just, you know, always mad about it. They never happy. They never happy. Uh, hear about the man who said, I'm going home, and if my wife doesn't have dinner ready, I'm going to throw her out. <laughs> and if she does have it ready, I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> did you, listen, did you know, I'm going to get down where we're, <laughs> do you know that Gossip is a sin. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Yes. Two or three of you know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you something. Gossip many times hurts more than a loaded gun. So God will discipline us. Listen, if we don't come to Him with a broken heart and cry out for, to Him for forgiveness, He will discipline us. Now, what kind of punishment does God use? Here's the thing I want to share with you. He's going to do whatever will be effective. Whatever will be effective. Listen, you remember old Jonah? He sent a big fish after Jonah. Remember Peter? He sent a rooster after Peter. And by the way, it worked both cases. God may have to send an ambulance after you. Whoop! What? 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says many are sick because they have sinned. Well, I believe many are sick because they are out of the will of God. They know that they're sinning. They know that they're doing those things that are wrong and they refuse to confess it 
refuse to admit it, and they're sick. Well, you say, well, I'll tell you, now, not all sick, listen, not all sickness is caused by sin. But if a person, listen, but if a person sins against God, he'll be emotionally sick. I want to tell you something. If you, if you sin against God and you, you, you're a child of his and you carry that around, you're going to be emotionally sick. You're going to be, nothing's going to be right in your life until you come to the place where you cry, out, Oh God, I have sinned. Please forgive me. There are a lot of people who just refuse to do that, you see. By the way, emotional sickness is as bad as being physical sick. Physically sick. I don't want to scare you this morning, but I may have to. Some of you need to read 1 John 5, 16. You know what it says? It says if a man keeps on failing to listen to God and will not obey, and God sees that he will not repent, You want me to read the rest of it? Yeah. He'll permit him to die. That's in God's holy scripture. What does God use to discipline his children? Whatever it takes to be effective. I want to say to you this morning, my dear friends, it is a serious thing to sin against God. You know, some people, some people feel that God doesn't care. You know, you just do whatever you want to and go on down the road whistling Dixie and God doesn't care. You know what you need to do? You need to talk to David. David found out that that's not true at all. What did God send to David? He sent the old prophet Nathan. Now you remember David, he had committed adultery, he had committed murder, and he did not confess his sin. One day the old prophet came by. You know, <laughs> preachers, by the way, always come at the wrong time. <laughs> not when you want to come. <laughs> I remember one time in Texas, I visited this young couple, they joined the church, and they were a sweet, sweet couple, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I stopped by, and they both are having a Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's cold or not, but I'm telling you. <laughs> she ran in the kitchen, and he almost dropped his Budweiser. <laughs> and he said this, Preacher, you came at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I came at the wrong time. Well, old, old Nathan came at the wrong time. And he said, look, David, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, he said, there's a man who had a little lamb boy. He raised it, you know. He'd taken care of it. He fed it and all and grow up. Come fat and no. all. And a man who had a whole bunch of lambs. Why well, he came by and took that lamb and eat it. Killed it. Eat it. David said, tell me who that man is. I'll get him. The old prophet stuck his finger. I, I, this is not in the Bible, but I think he did. He stuck <laughs> his finger up there in David's face and said, listen. It's you. It's you. It's you. God knows what we do. He knows when we sin. And he'll, he'll do whatever it takes to bring us to the place that he wants us to be. Now what did David, by the way, David repented of his sin. He cried out, oh God, oh God, forgive me. Forgive me, I'm a sinner. But you need to rest and read the rest of that story too. You know something, the sword never left David's house. David's son by one wife raped his sister by another. His son by one wife killed his brother by another. And Absalom, his son, 
trying to take over the throne. Perhaps the saddest part of this story was the little baby died. Little baby died. Ask David if a man can sin and get away with it. A lot of people today think you can sin and get away with it. God will just, he doesn't care. You know, I'll just do what I, oh my, please, please. Ask Jonah. Oh, Jonah down there in the belly of that fish, he finally woke up. And you know what? He said, Lord, I'm ready to go to Nineveh. I'm on my way. Get me out of this place. I'm going to go. And when he did, that's where he got out. And he headed for Nineveh. How about Peter? Peter. Man, you know what? Early on that morning when Jesus is crucified, Peter denied his Lord three times. And he heard that rooster crow. Oh, and he cried. He cried. He woke up. He found out that you can't get away with saying, God knows your heart. He knows what you've done. He knows about that lie that you told. He knows about that gossip that you spread. He knows about everything that we do. But you see, here's the thing about it. Any time you cry out to God and ask Him to forgive you, He will forgive you. And He will restate you to the joy of your salvation. Oh, that's what He wants to do. That, listen, that should be the cry of all of us today. Oh God, forgive me. Forgive me. I've sinned. Forgive. Now listen, if you're lost this morning, you're crazy. You need to cry out to him for salvation. Be merciful to me, O oh God. You need to be like the Philippian jailer. You remember the Philippian jailer? He cries out, Oh, what must I do to be saved? You remember the answer, don't you? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thy shall be, be saved. Christ wants to save you this morning. You're lost. You know what? You've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins. Believe. Confess your sins. Cry out to the Lord God. Save my soul, Lord Jesus, and he'll do it. Christians, let me once again say this to you. And I do this with all the love that I can muster up this morning. God loves you. Oh, he loves all of us. He loves us. And I don't care what you've done. If you'll confess it, cry out to him, he will forgive you. And he wants to do it. Please, please, do that today. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come confessing our sins. In my own heart and life, Lord God, if there's anything wrong or amiss, I want you to take it as far as the east is from the west, cleanse me, wash me, and make me white as snow. Oh God, I want to be right in your sight. And if I have done anything, you discipline me in the way that you feel is right. And Lord God, today I pray for this congregation. I pray that each and every person on the side of my voice, if they have committed a sin of any kind, and the Holy Spirit is convicting them, 
than right now. They'll cry out to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And God, you will forgive them. I pray to the Lord that as we leave this place this morning, we'll all go rejoicing, praising your holy name because we know that we are in a right relationship with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going